Hey everybody, my name is Alex, the geek of all trades, and this is the Gold Shell Byte. It is a new style <gasps> of crypto miner by Gold Shell, and today we're going to avoid its warranty because that's what we do. No disassemble. So what makes this unique is that these little cards are actually the hash boards or hash cards. Where on the inside here, there's some type of PCB with ASIC chips, assumingly powered by the chassis that kind of looks like a, a NAS or a network attached storage device. Low power, low hash rate. It's supposed to be a very entry level device. I want to see what's on the inside here and full transparency. I've already done this and the video looked horrible. So I'm doing it again. So I know what these look like, but you don't unless you're watching this a second time. In that case, thank you for watching a second time. If not, hold on to your butts. So we're gonna rip this open to take a look at what the actual card is itself and the ASIC chips upon it. And then we're gonna rip this open and see what is on the inside of the chassis for the gold shell bite. But first, let's hear a word from today's video sponsor. Tired of waiting around for your mining rewards? With Via BTC script mining pool, payouts are fast. We're talking minutes, not hours. Once your earnings are confirmed, you get paid. No delays, no drama. And if you're into flexibility, Via BTC makes it easy to switch between top coins like Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Caspa instantly with zero downtime. Just click and mine. Want to boost your profits without burning more power? Try Litecoin Merge Mining. With Via BTC, you can mine Litecoin and get up to six other altcoins at the same time. No extra effort, no extra electricity. And it gets better. Via BTC is now SOC 2 Type 1 certified, proving their commitment to rock solid security and trust. So if you're serious about mining smarter, not harder, Via BTC has your back. Fast payouts, flexible mining, proven security. Start mining with Via BTC today. Check out the links in the video description. I'm just going to jump into this. This is the DG card by Gold Shell. What we're going to want to do is rip off this label and we'll just put it off to the side. And then there's like a sticky pad under it. We're going to rip that off as well because we're going to need access to four screws underneath it. Next, we're going to go ahead and take off four screws on the end where the SATA ports are. Take that little plate off. And then this side, there's a screw that's front facing and a screw that's side facing. We'll take off that end cap. From here, there's a top plate and a bottom plate. And then the PCB is kind of squished in between. So this top plate where the fan side is just kind of slides right off like that. Pretty sweet. On the inside, we can see our fan and heat sink couple of you know capacitors and things but this right here where's it at this is actually the bus bar next we're going to take off this fan now when you get all the screws out there's a piece of tape that's right here just leave that on the fan it kind of comes up from the heat sink so you don't have to worry about it but when you do take it off there's a little ribbon well it's not a ribbon cable it's just a tiny plug that is going to come undone if you're not careful you don't want to break it no maybe you do i don't know Next up, we'll go ahead and take off the heat sink. And that is those four screws on the back that were under the label that we saw earlier. And these screws are spring loaded. When you get all four of these screws out, the heat sink's actually just gonna drop. You could probably hold on to the heat sink so it doesn't just drop. Yep, that's that fresh thermal paste I just put on the other day. What a waste. And then on the inside, uh, real quick, let me clean this up. It does take a minute to get all of the thermal paste off that isopropyl. I isopropyl, that isopropyl alcohol smells fantastic. And there we are. We can take this and tear this down a little bit further. The control board comes out. You just take off the bus bars, or you can really just take two of the bus bars off. These standoffs, which were where the fan was plugged into or screwed down into, come out. They hold that board onto the card chassis. And there's another screw that's right here that does the same. But let's look at the ASIC chips themselves. That's interesting to see. There's five ASIC chips on each of these cards, at least on the DG card. Haven't taken apart the AE card yet. You know what? If I get 100 likes on this video, I'll go ahead and take apart the AE card out of the other 
gold shell unit, if that's something you want to see. The board that the ASIC chips are on actually has adhesive on it and is like glued down to the, the cards chassis. So that's really as far down as uh, I'm going to disassemble the card because you don't really see much more taking those boards off of that card chassis. So I'm going to take the other DG card out, put it off to the side, and then we're going to take this bad boy apart. This is kind of cool, actually, but it is a complete pain in the ass to take apart. And let me let me just tell you that this side, the front of it, you can see it's kind of chewed up from me trying to get it off before. There's clips that this just clips onto when it goes into place. And even with a long screwdriver or a pick tool, it's really difficult to get to to kind of jimmy those off to push it off. So I had just a little screwdriver, like a precision screwdriver that I went by and I pried that thing up all the way with. From there, there's a plastic piece underneath it. SATA board connects to. So there's seven screws on the top and then it just lifts out. And then these kind of push in they're actually setting inside of these little grooves on the inside of the chassis so we'll put that off to the side as well and then from here this bottom part here is where usb power sd card and reset button are and that just comes right out so this is like a system on chip card i believe uh, an soc chip it just rides on rails on these two side pieces within the inside of the bite chassis but it connects to a dual SATA backplane with a PCIe X8 connector. I'll insert some of the footage from when I took this completely apart to kind of show that. The breakout board with the SATA connectors on it has a PCI Express X8 slot that's open-ended. And then this just kind of slides into it here like, like that. Like that's, that was really as, as broken down as it needed to be. This is the inside of one of these bite cards. Were you surprised that it had five chips on the inside of this? I'll go ahead and insert some pictures again from when I previously did this of a closer look at those chips and there's a chip number on it. Let me know if you know where these chips come from. Are they from another gold shell unit that's already existing in the wild? Or are we looking at some new chips they're going to show up in some new Dogecoin script mining ASICs sometime in the near future. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Now that the warranty on this has been sufficiently voided, make sure you like and subscribe to see more videos like it. I guess I should put this thing back together now.